In this video, I'm going to teach you about the silky chicken, how many eggs they lay, as far as the history, where they came from, and later on, I'll teach you how to care for them. Hi, welcome to the Happy Chicken Coop. Thanks for joining me today. Please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also be sure to subscribe to our website, thehappychickencoop.com. If you subscribe, you'll receive a free ebook on the 10 best egg laying chicken breeds. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. So the silky chickens have been called fluff balls or aliens from another world, teddy bears, and many other things. Without a now, they are certainly unusual looking chickens. Their strange appearance, friendliness, and mothering skills are surely what endears them to many folk. So let's talk about the silky chicken's background. There's no doubt that the silky chicken is an ancient breed, probably of Chinese origin. Some believe that the silky chicken dates back as far as the Chinese Han Dynasty in 206 BC. The Chinese name for the silky chicken is Wuguji, meaning black boned. And an alternative name for this bird is the Chinese silk chicken. This evidence points to a Chinese origin quite strongly, but it cannot be stated completely. It was first mentioned by Marco Polo around 1290 to 1300 on his remarkable journey across Europe in the Far East. Although he did not see the bird, it was reported to him by a fellow traveler. He reported it in his journal as a furry chicken. The silky chicken made its way westward either by the Silk Road or the maritime routes, likely both. The ancient Silk Road stretched from China to modern day Iraq. Numerous secondary routes crossed over into Europe and the Balkan states. The next mention we have is from Italy where Algervandi in 1590 98 speaks of a chicken with fur like a black cat. When people first introduced the silky chicken to the European public, it was said to be the offspring of a chicken and a rabbit, a not so unbelievable thing back in the 1800s. Many unscrupulous sellers sold silkies to gullible folks for curiosity, and it was used as a freak show item in travel sideshows and exhibited as a bird mammal. Now let's talk about the breed standard. Experts accepted the silky chicken into the British poultry standard of perfection in 1865, and the American Poultry Association standard in 1874. The Australian Poultry Standard accepted silkies in 1998, but those are only for bantams. Interestingly, all silkies in the US and Canada are considered to be a bantam regardless of size. Every other country in the world recognizes both bantam and large fowl types. In the UK, large fowl silkies should weigh around four pounds or 64 ounces for the males and three pounds for the females. And bantam should weigh around 600 grams for males and 500 grams for females. As far as us in the US, that's 600 grams is 21 ounces for males and 18 ounces for females. Accepted colors are blue, black, white, gray, buff, splash, and partridge. Several other colors are available, such as lavender, cuckoo, and red, but they are not quite accepted into the APA yet. Now, what you've all been waiting for, let's talk about the egg laying, and then stick around because we are gonna talk about how to care for these chickens because they are a little bit different and so are their feathers. So, silkies are poor performers in the egg laying department. If you get 120 eggs in a year, you're doing well. This equates about three eggs each week. The eggs are cream to tinted color and are small to medium in size. They start laying earlier in the year than most hens, starting up once the days begin to get longer, occasionally late December, but more often in January. And silkies are known to be calm, friendly, and docile, even the boys. It has been recorded by several people that the roosters will tidbit for the chicks. This docility can lead them to being picked on by one of the more pushy flock members. They do best when put with others of the similar nature, such as the Polish hen. Despite their fluffy feathering, they tolerate the cold fair fairly well. Wetness is something they cannot tolerate. If your climate is freezing in the winter, they will benefit from a little supplemental heat. They are contented to be confined, but if allowed to free range, they are great little foragers. The area they forage should be a safe zone since they cannot fly to escape predators. Silkies are more renowned as being pets, brooders, and ornamental birds. The silky chicken is notoriously difficult to sex until around six months old. A breeder can give you their best guess in sex, but it's not certain until the birds crow or not. Now, are silkies noisy? They're actually not noisy at all. This makes sense considering their calm disposition. This makes this breed great if you live in an apartment or if you live in a smaller area and are allowed to have chickens. As long as they have some space, they can be a great addition to your lifestyle. You won't have to worry about your neighbor complaining about chicken squawking. Now, let's talk about the chicken care and what to watch out for. As far as health issues, silkies can be quite susceptible to Merrick's disease. Many silky chicken breeders have bred their stock for natural immunity, but of course, you can get your birds vaccinated with 
with silkies being very fluffy, they can be perfect target for mites and lice. So you should pay due diligence to these little fluff balls. And you may also need to trim the feathers around the eyes to help them see a little better. Occasionally the fluff at the rear end does need trimming for hygiene and breeding purposes. Other than that, the silky is quite robust and will usually live between seven and nine years and longer with lots of tender love and care. Now let's talk about if a silky gets wet. Drying your silky chicken quickly can be the difference between life and death of your fluffy chicken. Since the feathers do not stick together on this furry breed, they aren't insulated like other breeds of chickens. This means they can catch a chill easily and die of hypothermia, especially if they live in cold climates. Tidbitting is when a rooster finds a tasty treat and calls his hens over to allow them to munch on it first. He usually collects to them, picks up the morsel and drops it so the girls can see it. Silkies have been known to do this for chicks as well. While most roosters in this breed are friendly, they are also territorial and can be aggressive to strangers. But as with all breeds, temperament can vary from chicken to chicken. So is this the right bird for you? It's the ultimate in kids chickens. They are cuddly, fluffy, tolerant, love sitting in your lap and even enjoy cuddles. They are friendly, calm and docile birds and interact very well with people and they will follow you around and talk to you. This docility can lead to them to being picked on by a more aggressive flock member, so keep an eye on that. Silkies are notoriously breedy. The standing joke is that the silky can hatch a rock. They also make great mothers. Many folk keep silkies to hatch out other eggs. A silky chicken in broody mode will usually accept any eggs, including duck placed under her. So let's answer some common questions that you might have. How cold can silkies handle? They're relatively cold hardy and tolerate low temperatures well. As long as you give these chickens a roof over their head, they will survive in temperatures close to zero degrees Fahrenheit. Do silky chickens lay eggs to eat? Yes, a silky chicken is considered a backyard chicken and they lay white to cream colored eggs that are safe to eat. Are silky chickens expensive? The price of a silky can vary. Top quality silky chickens can cost around 10 to $15 and hens between 20 to $50. Do silky chickens smell? Like all pets, chickens have a distinct smell. When you don't bathe your animal or pets, they start to smell bad. As long as you keep them and their quarters clean, these chickens should not smell any different than they normally do. If you like this video, you'll also love this video next that I'm gonna talk about the miniature chicken or the Sorama chicken breed. So go ahead and check that one out as well. That's gonna do it. Thanks for joining and I hope you have a great day.